So you've just bought the Magnolia starter deck for Vanguard Overdress, and you're curious on how to improve it. Well, I'm going to give you two example deck lists of what happens to this deck after the first set of Vanguard Overdress is released. So my name is Shy, and let's just get right into it, shall we? So before we get into how to upgrade your deck, let's talk about what is in the starter deck. So I'm going to run through all the cards really quick, uh, explain what they do, if they're good or not. So yeah, let's just get right into it. This is the Ride Line. So Latte, Cheris, Lattice, and Magnolia. Latte, the same effect as every starter in the game right now. When this unit is rode upon, if you want second, draw a card. Next we have Sylvan Hornbeast Cheris. This is your grade one ride target. So what this card does is when rode upon by Lattice, which is your grade two, you get to reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a grade two or less, call it. If it isn't, put it into your soul. So that's uh, kind of RNG, you just check the top deck and then call it. It's still good because you do want to flood your board with this deck. Uh, Magnolia is aggressive and it's resource intensive, so any plusing you'll take it. Uh, this card is also a very good rear guard. So its rear guard skill is from the back row. During the battle this unit attacks, it gets 5,000 power. So if you don't already know, the Magnolia deck's gimmick is making units in your back row be able to attack, usually in Vanguard. Units in the back row are only reserved for boosting, things like that. But this deck lets them attack, so you can potentially get 4 to 6 attacks because you use all your circles to attack. It's very fun, uh, it feels pretty strategic, I, I love it. Anyway, the grade 2, Lattice. When rode upon by Magnolia, that's your grade 3. Uh, you get to Soul Blast 1, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a unit, call it. If it isn't, put it into your hand. So very similar to Lattice, uh, except this one costs a soul. You just check the top and try to plus, basically, put something on your board. Now, the problem with these two cards is that the odds of you getting a trigger or something you don't want to call are very high. So let's just look. Uh, your deck is 50 cards. Your ride deck is 4 cards, so down to 46, right? You have 16 triggers. You do not want to call these. You want to get them in your hand to guard with them or to trigger their effects through drive checks. So that's 16 cards you don't want to trigger. You have four Sentinels, which stays in the full deck, by the way. So now that's 20 cards you don't want to call. And then you have Magnolia, which you want in your hand to Persona Ride. So that is 23 cards in your 46 card deck. And your hand is tends to not have triggers in it in the early game because you shuffled them back in when you redrew. So these two cards have a very high chance of getting triggers. Uh, that's why there are two versions of Magnolia. There's a version of Magnolia that keeps this ride line, and there's a version of Magnolia that replaces these two cards. I'm going to go through both of them, but first let's keep on going through the trial deck. The, like with every starter deck, uh, you do get a play set of all your ride deck cards. You get three more Magnolia, three more Lattice, three more Cheris. Uh, unlike the other starter decks, Lattice and Cheris are actually very good rear guards. So yeah, they're pretty good. Even in the full deck, you do end up keeping them both, at least Cheris you do keep. So yeah. Let's talk about the order that comes in the main deck. This is a defensive order, Call to the Beast. So what this card does is choose one of your units and it gets plus 5,000, so it's just a five shield. But if your back row is full, you could you get 15 instead of five. This card is not nearly as good as it sounds. A lot of decks in the game already have ways to remove your back row and make this just a five shield. Uh, there is a much better defensive order in Stoikeo in the set that is a common and it pretty much instantly replaces this. So we're gonna talk about it when we get there, but let's keep on going. So Duger is a great two. His effect is very simple. If you have four or more other rear guards, he gets 5,000 power. Uh, this doesn't sound good, but it actually is pretty good. Uh, 5,000 matters a lot in this deck. Your attacks are plentiful, but they're pretty weak. So you take any power you can get and Duger just does, does just that. Uh, it's a free 5,000 power. If you Persona Ride, it's a 25,000 uh, in your front row, which is pretty strong. That's a magic number. So uh, just to briefly explain magic numbers, all grade three vanguards are 13,000 power. If you damage a trigger, you get to add 10,000 to something. So this can become 23,000 defensively. Uh, Duger, because he gets 5,000 power. If you Persona Ride, he becomes 25, which hits over 23. So that's a magic number. Uh, it's a number that can still hit over a trigger, usually, or over a certain shield value. Looting Petal Somalia is the next card. It's a grade two. This card is once per turn, counter boss one and soul boss one. 
This unit gets boost and plus 5,000 power for the whole turn. This is very overcosted. Uh, the challenge in the Magnolia deck is managing your resources and using them when you have to. Because you do run out of soul a lot. Uh, your ride line costs a soul if you use Lattice's effect. Your Lattice rear guards cost soul. Uh, this card which you're going to get to soon costs soul. And this card costs soul. So a lot of things cost soul. This is one of the weakest effects in the starter deck. Uh, just getting boost in 5,000 doesn't really mean too much. This card gets replaced by a double rare when we move on. So yeah. And of course, this guy gets replaced because it is just a vanilla with no abilities. It kind of sucks because I love his art. It's so funny. It's a bug with a really big sword in a suit. Moving on to the grade ones, you get your Cheris. This does absolutely stay in both builds of Magnolia. It's just a good card. Uh, being able to swing for... From the back row, he gets 5. And then Magnolia gives him another 5. So he swings for 18. That's nice and strong. Cyrus. This is a grade 1. Once per turn. Soul Blast 2. Reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a unit, call it. If it isn't, put it in your hand. Soul Blasting 2 for doing something your ride line does already is very expensive. Whenever I played with just the starter deck, I almost never used this card's skill because it just costs way too much. Uh, yeah, he gets replaced, obviously, but yeah. And then you have your perfect guards. Uh, if you don't know, the first booster set for Overdress has a upgraded version of the starter deck perfect guards for every single nation. So this card just gets replaced by a straight up improvement. And those improvements are only rare, so they should be pretty cheap. So yeah. And of course, you do get your trigger lineup. It comes with four heals, three fronts, four jaws, four crits, and Olbaria, your over trigger. So this over trigger, when it's triggered, um, usually when you trigger an over trigger, uh, I, I just said the word trigger so many times. Usually, when they're triggered, you give one unit 100 million power. Olbaria, however, gives two units 100 million power. So this trigger uh, usually is replaced in every other nation. But in Stoikea, it's actually pretty good. I'll explain why when we get to the main build. Uh, most people still end up replacing it with the Stoikea over trigger. Uh, I do as well. But this one is not worth dismissing right away in this deck. I'll get to it later. This is the starter deck. So let's get into what happens with uh, support from the first set. Okay, so this is what a Magnolia deck fully supported looks like. Uh, there are a few changes, uh, some cards you may not recognize yet. So let's just get right into it. Uh, obviously, your ride line still remains the same. They're all strong cards. So still keep your three copies of Magnolia because you do want to Persona Ride as much as possible. This is the new defensive order that's in the set. It's just a common, so it's called Ghost Chase. Uh, this is a Blitz order, so you use it defensively uh, to guard your opponent's attacks. Choose one of your units, and it gets 5,000 power at the end of the battle. So effectively, a 5k shield. Then choose one of your rear guards that's not being attacked and return it to your hand. This is really good because, as I stated, uh, Cheris and Lattice, very often top deck you a trigger or a uh, perfect guard or something like that. So you can use Ghost Chase to bring those back. Also, let's say you just rushed and you have two front row rear guards and your opponent, in order to slow down your rush they're going to attack your rear guards and not your vanguard what you can do is ghost chase and bounce one of those rear guards back to your hand so you can guarantee another body on the board next turn so you can use these to protect your allies as well ghost chase is just a really strong card the west really seems to like it a lot more than japan uh i'm in the opinion that it's a really good card and it's worth running in this deck uh, i would run it at i'm considering running it at three as well but this is just an example list so Next, we move on to the Pink Bear. I do not know how to pronounce his name. This is the triple rare that Stoikea got, that Magnolia specifically got in the first set. And his effect is really powerful. So auto from the back row, when he attacks, counter boss one, choose one of your other rear guards, and it gets this unit's power. So if this card is like 20,000 power, you attack, counter boss one, give any other unit 20,000 power. That's really strong. Uh, any other rear guard, whatever. But that's still That's still really strong. If you get an over trigger and this card becomes 100 million, you can counter bust and give one of your other units 100 billion. So yeah, this card is really strong. You like allotting all of your power boosts to this card and just making two huge rear guards and draining your opponent's hand. It's strong. But these three cards all use a lot of counter boss, so you do have to use it uh use it well. Like I said, the Magnolia deck uh does challenge your ability to use resources effectively. So you do have to manage it well, how often you use it. You don't just want to spam it, you know. Anyway, 
This is a double rare for Magnolia. Uh, Spring Maiden, uh, Spurring Maiden, Alenia. So when this unit is placed on rear guard from hand, counter boss one, soul boss one, choose a grade two or less card from your drop zone and call it to rear guard, and it gets plus 5,000 power. So for a counter blast and a soul blast, you get to bring back effectively anything from your drop zone. This is way better than that counter blast soul blast girl from the starter deck. So instant replacement, and it's just a double rare, so it shouldn't cost you too much. I do recommend picking up this card probably first, to be honest, if you're upgrading this deck. Uh, it's just very good. Uh, let's say you rush them and then they kill your rear guards. You can just call this down and bring one of them back. So it helps keep up the aggression. It helps not use a bunch of cards from your hand to fill up the board. It's just a strong card. So and it's it's worth a counter blast and the soul blast usually. Next, uh, Duger still stays because he's a good beater. Uh, he doesn't cost anything. Next, Lattice, just a good beater. We've been through him. He stays. Some people have experimented with cutting him because they think the soul is better used on your Vanguard Lattice and on Millennia. That's up to you. I've seen people do like four Duger, two of this, or just cut this out completely for other cards. Again, it's up to you, but this is an example deck list. So I personally like Lattice a lot, so I keep him in. Next for the grade ones, you have the straight up upgraded perfect guard. The reason this perfect guard is better is because it has an additional uh, effect to its ability. If your hand has two or more cards, choose a card from your hand and discard it. So that means if you only have one card in your hand and then you guard with it, you don't have to pay the cost and its sentinel ability activates. That is just a straight up upgrade. Uh, you don't use that particular part of its effect too often but it's just a straight up upgrade and these new perfect cards are just rares so you might as well upgrade it next we have the bug this card is fantastic Admantis. when this unit is placed on rear guard choose one of your rear guards and it gets plus 5000 power one of your other rear guards so you can't choose itself this is just strong because it helps hit magic numbers let's say you're calling a column of the bug and elenia right you call elenia first uh you can use her effect if you want to and then you call the bug and you give her 5000 power now this column is 23,000. If you Persona Road and swing with Elenia alone, she's going to swing for 25, so that's a magic number. So again, you can just see why this 5,000 power is very strong. Uh, Elenia also synergizes well with it because if this card uh, is put into your drop zone, you can use Elenia's effect to bring it back, and then its effect activates, you can give another unit 5,000 power. Bug is just really good. It helps fix your kind of low numbers. It makes the deck very threatening. So yeah, four copies. This is a... Very key card. I, it's just a common. And Cheris still stays because uh, he swings for... Oh, and the bug's over. He usually swings for 18 from the back row, which is also a magic number because that means if your opponent's vanguard is at 13, they usually have to guard with 15,000 in shield to guard it, which is just good. So, and every nation gets one more uh, version of every existing trigger. So you get another crit, which lets you run eight criticals, which I am running. Almost every deck is using all criticals, uh, eight criticals, so it doesn't need too much explanation. You want to be aggressive, so you want to check crits. Uh, then you have your new over trigger, which I'll get into. You do get another heal. Uh, this one, I just love this art, so I run this one instead. If you like the deer, go ahead. Uh, and then I run three draw triggers still, because you do want to draw into your pieces. You want to be able to keep up your aggression if your rear guards get wiped out somehow. And the new over trigger is called Bless Favor. So what Bless Favor does is when it's checked, it is essentially checking every single trigger in the game. So additional effect draw a card. If you don't know, when you trigger an over trigger, uh, you're supposed to remove it from the game and then draw a card. So this additional effect means you get to draw another card on top of that. So when you trigger this, you draw two, then you get to give one of your units a critical, like a critical trigger, and then all of your front row gets 10,000 power, like a front trigger. And then if you have more cards in your damage zone than your opponent, you get to heal one. So like a heal trigger, but a little worse. This is pretty strong. Uh, I like it more than Olbaria, the starter deck over trigger. Because it just throws a bunch of numbers on your board. It makes everything super threatening. So This is what the upgraded version looks like. Uh, yeah, you got a triple rare, a double rare, and then some rares and commons. This deck, uh, it feels very nice to play. It's really aggressive and... It's like tactical aggression, you know, it's not like Nirvana where you're just Unga Bunga Overdress Counter Blast Power. This one is a, a little more thought out, but it is rewarding in that sense. Uh, if you're the type of player that likes being aggressive, but also thinking, 
Uh, this is a good deck to pick up. It feels so satisfying to win with this deck. And it's not even bad. Uh, Japan likes it. It's seen a few tops over there. Uh, yeah, it is a little harder to pilot than, like, let's say Bastion or Barrow Magnes or something like that. But it's still good. Now that I've gone through what the normal version of Magnolia is, let's talk about the second version. Okay, you know how sad I was about to talk about the second version? Yeah, I lied. Uh, I want to talk about some other cards you can put into the deck that other people have ran. Gloomy Tor, he is so ugly. I literally don't run him just because he's ugly. Uh, this card is when this unit boosts, it gets plus 2,000 power. So it just boosts for 10. That's it. So if you have like a Duger in front of him, this is a 25 column, which is pretty nice. It's a magic number against grade 2s and grade 3s. Uh, but other than that, he doesn't really do anything else. Every nation has a clone of this card. Uh, it's pretty good in Nirvana. It's not so good in the other clans, but I just thought I'd throw it out there. Next, we have Elio. Uh, this is a rearguard skill. Retire this unit. Choose two of your units, and it gets 5,000. Uh, I've already mentioned how strong adding 5,000 power to something is. But retiring a unit goes against what the deck wants to do. You want to flood your board, and you want to be super aggressive. So throwing away a card to add 5,000 power doesn't feel that good to me. I didn't like this card when I tested it, but some people do. I've seen it in some lists. Next, this card is an absolute noob trap. I do not recommend running this card at all. I'm sure most people that have played this deck a lot also do not run it. It's Tearing Malice. Uh, play this card by retiring two rear guards. You draw a card, put this card into your soul, and then counter charge. So that may sound good at first, right? Like, hey, I'm drawing, I'm soul charging, and I'm counter charging. This deck is resource intensive, and I get to put my resources back up. That's pretty good, right? It's not. You're retiring two of your rear guards. They're usually useful things or things that can be bounced with Ghost Chase. And this, uh, it's just overcosted. And the put this in soul and counter charge, it's not enough reward for how much you're paying by retiring two rear guards. So yeah, really don't recommend this card. But yeah, these are the other options I've seen Magnolia players consider. You may like them, you may not. I personally didn't, but just some things to experiment with. So now we're moving on to the second version of Magnolia. Okay, so let's talk about the second version of Magnolia. This one replaces the Ride Line cards with the Ride Line cards for Zorga. Zorga is Stoikea's second build that's also available in the first set. This one changes a few things. Let's just start with the Ride Line. So we have Rancor Chain. What Rancor Chain does is on Vanguard, uh, Soul Blast 1, draw two cards, choose up to one order card from your hand and discard it. If you did not discard, choose two cards and discard it. So basically, it's Soul Blast 1, draw 2, uh, drop an order. And if you don't have an order, you have to drop 2. So people's justification for this is that uh, Cheris is kind of RNG. He has a 50% chance, something like that, to top deck a trigger or something useless. So why not just draw a better hand or try to filter to get a nice hand? Help with this effect, we do run more orders. Running 7 orders gives you like a... Someone did the math on this on Discord. It gives you like a 70% chance to have an order when you have to discard for him. So it's pretty good. Even if you don't have an order, you still get to filter your hand and get a pretty nice hand. So yeah, this card is pretty good if you're not a fan of Charis. So next, Black Tears Hus Dragon. This card is pretty simple when it's placed on Vanguard. Choose a normal order from your drop zone and add it to your hand. So you drop an order with Rancor Chain. Then when you ride up to Black Tears, you just get to add it back. This is a pretty stable line compared to basically just top decking with Cheris and with Lattice and just hoping you get good cards. That's the main justification for this. I personally, uh, I like this one just because it is kind of consistent, but it does restrict the, the amount of cards you run because you do have to run a lot of orders. Next, uh, yeah, Magnolia always stays. So moving into the main deck, of course, you keep your other three copies of Magnolia to Persona Ride. Next, we run this order called Spiritual Body Condensation. So you Soul Blast 1 to play it. Choose a card with a grade equal to or less than your Vanguard from the drop zone. Call it to rear and it gets 5,000 power. When you are being very aggressive, uh, people are going to kill your rear guards either through abilities or by attacking them. And you can just cast this card to bring them back. We play four of it because it is pretty good. And your ride line is using one soul for ranker chain. So you do have some soul sometimes. Next, we up Ghost Chase to three. Just so you have another order to possibly drop for chain. And because Ghost Chase is just a straight up good card and you would be running it anyway. So for the grade 2s, you may notice a Lattice is gone because uh, your soul is going towards this, this, and this. So we still run Alenia just to bring things back from the drop zone. We still run Duger 
and we run uh, the pink bear, but at a smaller amount of two. So most lists I've seen that uh, do this version of the ride line usually cut this card out completely and just run four Duger. I guess the justification is that you usually won't really have that much counter blast since people are going to be attacking your rear guards. Uh, good players at least will. But honestly, I've had a, a lot of situations where I do have more than one counter boss open. So I figured I might as well just run him at two. Duger's still good. And yeah, I've been liking this version so far. But if you want to do the traditional version of this list, it's four Duger and four Alenia. Uh, go right ahead. Trade ones don't change at all. Uh, Lattice is the card that ends up... Lattice and this card are the ones that pay the price of having to run more orders. So you still have your four perfect guards, your four bug, and your four Cheris. As for the triggers, I play three fronts in this one instead of three draws. Just because this deck is very, very aggressive. Uh, you just want to drop down cards, bounce them back if they're in danger, and just keep rushing your opponent. Uh, everything else stays. Your eight crits, your blessed flavor, your four heals. This version, uh, I guess it's a little harder to pilot. It does feel very safe, pretty consistent though, compared to the other Magnolia being a little high roll with all your top decks. Also, you get to use these guys in their sick art. Look at this guy's art. I love this card. That's it for the second version of Magnolia. So, uh, I recommend just picking up the pieces for both. You only, uh, if you, let's say you build the first version of Magnolia, um, the only cards you will need are front triggers, which are in the trial deck, uh, Spiritual Body Condensation, another Ghost Chase, and then these two guys, which I believe one of them is a common and one of them is a rare in the set. So you really don't need much at all to try out both versions of the deck. I really recommend trying out both and seeing which one you like. That is my how to upgrade your Magnolia starter deck. Magnolia is a very fun deck to play. It's very hard to master because it challenges your ability to use resources properly and not just whenever they're available. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I do plan on making one for how to build Zorga. Uh, probably one for Prison too, since Prison is one of the one of the weaker decks in the set. Maybe Orphis too, since who doesn't like Orphis? But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you like what you watched, uh, I guess subscribe, leave a like. You know, I'm gonna try to pump out some overdress content because I'm very hyped for this format. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you soon. Later.